The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by Tenet Controls, makers of lighting kits, soundboards, and more. Tenet Controls brings your models to life. And by HDA Model Works, suppliers of scale model lighting products, detail parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelWorks.com today. Hello again everybody, Boyd here with you and welcome to another update on our Ravel 1350 scale Battleship Bismarck build. I kind of feel like Zombie Boyd right now. <laughs> I've been down for a few days with uh, a really bad flu bug, lost my voice and everything, but I'm starting to feel better. We're back out here um, doing a little bit of work. I've been working on all my client stuff, but I got a couple hours in on the Bismarck here and I wanted to show you guys... Um, the progress we're making. We've uh, done a little bit more work here at the center part of the ship, uh, mainly on the superstructure, just you know, piece by piece, going along deck by deck, slowly building it up. And I've worked my way all the way up to the top of the Admiral's Bridge now, which is this area right in here. We have all the uh, radar uh, emplacements uh, done, the gun director's platform, the uh, kind of working our way back towards the rear here, and uh, adding little photo etch details as we go along which is really tedious and you know you're just working with these uh, really small parts and everything so you've got to pay a lot of attention not to lose them and all that and you're bending things really carefully but um, getting better at it as you go along you know your hands get more and more dexterous as you get used to working with it so it's working out pretty good um, as far as the kit goes itself I really like this Revell kit I'm glad I chose this kit uh, a couple of my friends recommended it. Uh, you know, there are several 350 scale Bismarck kit manufacturers out there, and I think the Ravel kit is the most uh, accurate and it's the most detailed. And I'm really happy we went with this. Everything's been fitting just absolutely perfect, no problems, and um, so it's a great kit, even though it's a fairly old kit. But um, you can see we've been doing uh, detail work here. If, if you look at this area right in here, where this gun director's area is. We have all these fire control uh, uh, aids that they use, you know, periscopes, range finders, and all that, the uh, binocular platforms. That's all from that kit that we showed you that came with this model uh, from veteran models of the uh, Super Detail Fire Control Set, which is really nice. Those were all just um, regular, you know, pegs that were sticking up before with no detail, so we had to cut all those off and then replace it with all this stuff, and it looks really nice. Same thing up in this area here. We've got the Super Detailed... Um, uh, spotlights that we put on this from that also from veteran models and then we've got these nice uh, quad uh, 20 millimeter anti-aircraft guns above the admiral's bridge here with all the photo etch details on that the blast shields and the ammo clips and everything and a lot of detail on the funnel I'm glad I got the funnel uh, mounted on the ship now because it had all that stuff that we showed you last time and I was afraid it was going to get damaged so it's on there nice and secure now and protected so but um I love the detail in these radar assemblies here too because that's all photo etch. They're um, like probably like 12 pieces and you can just see how much better that looks than the, than the standard plastic ones would have. And so it's really nice. I'm not quite done with everything yet. We're just kind of putting some of the bigger stuff on and then working our way through just going up deck by deck. I built one of these jib cranes here. Uh, still got to do the one on the starboard side but we've got some rigging on that. If you can see it there we've got uh, we're using that easy line for doing that, which it's it's a stretchy type string that works out really great for, um, you know, you, you put a tiny little dab of CA glue and then you just stretch it out, CA glue the other end and it leaves it nice and taut and realistic looking and it'll never fray or get fuzzy like regular thread does, so it's made for doing this kind of thing. Got the Arado um, seaplanes built, you can see one of them here. It's not on the catapult yet, but um, the other one is inside the hangar there, you can just see it sticking out. Um, 
I went online and did research to find out how they were supposed to be painted and everything. Now, this Ravel kit gives you all the markings for these planes except the swastikas that go on the tail, which we did, in, we did have those included with one of our accessory decal sets that we got with this, so those are on there. And even the little markings on the sides of the fuselage that uh, have a seahorse on one side and this little logo right here that shows that it was attached to the Bismarck. Um, so that's some nice little detail on that. We'll get the catapult all set up and everything here in a little bit. But um, you can see it's just, you know, working out really great. So just going along deck by deck and everything using uh, this wood kit from MK1. I've used that all up now. It's all installed. So uh, not one problem at all. It all came apart perfectly and stuck down on there really good. I haven't seen any wrinkles or lifting going on anywhere. So um, I'm real happy with that too. I'll definitely be using this stuff on any ships I ever build in the future. It's just fantastic and it adds a you know, really nice level of uh, detail onto the model. Definitely going to use it on the hood kit when we build that one. But uh, now let me show you um, the main thing that I've been working on here. This is the uh, lighting that I decided to do on this. That was kind of one of the main features I wanted to build into the model. Um, as I said, I'm building this as a sort of an admiral's build. You know, they call that an admiral's build when it's like really clean, like a museum type build. Um, and you wouldn't see a battleship, you know, running around with a lot of lights like a, like an ocean liner. Um, but for this kind of a build, I thought it might be appropriate, and I think it looks really nice. We've got um, all the uh, portholes opened up and, and uh, you know, our lighting going on around the uh, bow here and at the stern. And then we've got it all throughout the superstructure here. I don't have every single one of them lit up. I thought that might look better if it was a little bit random. But we've got our um, lower bridge down there, the captain's bridge, and then the admiral's bridge up on top lit. We've got the little navigation lights there, the red one and the green one over here. And um, it's working out really nice. It's all fiber optics. Um, oops, didn't mean to hit the zoom button. But um, we have... Uh, just maybe uh, eighth of an inch long pieces of fiber optic just stuck in those holes there with a little dab of glue on the inside and they're just picking up the light from the strips that I put down on the inside. Uh, in a couple places in the superstructure I had to tuck in a little um, 0805 SMD um, to get the light up in there but uh, it worked out really great. Everything's done using warm white lighting which I thought would look you know more correct for you know 1941 and not, you know, like fluorescent white. So I really like that. And um, you can see it's pretty much all over the whole thing here. So there's probably, I can't tell you how many exactly, but there's probably, you know, three or 400 at least uh, windows that are lit up on this. So looks pretty cool. Now this model wasn't lit or meant to be lit. So I wound up having some light leaks around on it here and there. So I just took this, um, Vallejo putty um, and it has this you know really fine little applicator tip so I was able to just kind of go in wherever I saw a little light leak coming out and uh, I would take a brush with some water because this will break down with water and just kind of brush it and brush it and brush it until I got rid of all the putty um, except inside the crack or whatever you know the gap or whatever and I'd let it dry and then I would just come back and touch it up with some paint and that took care of all the light leaks and believe me there was a lot <laughs> Because we had a lot of powerful lighting, you know, stuffed inside this to try to get it all the way up to the top. So, but I've got it all pretty much done. There's a few tiny ones. I noticed there's one down in here I've got to take care of. But uh, um, most of the major ones are all cleaned up. And um, so that's pretty much going to be it for the lighting. Um, the plan that I originally talked about for uh, powering this, what I'm going to do is I was going to put a battery inside the model, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to... Um, put a jack, I, I have this jack here where I was going to use for recharging the battery. I'm actually going to put a jack uh, on the bottom side of the hull here where you can't see it and um, up you know, through the base here. This base is uh, not tall enough to house a battery so I'm going to have another kind of a sub base underneath of that with the actual battery in it and then that will extend. The jack is going to extend up through here and just simply when I set the ship down on top of it uh, it'll plug into the jack and provide power to the uh, to the model and that's uh, pretty much the plan I thought you know the batteries these uh, lithium-ion batteries that they have now are meant to last a long time but you know eventually it will go bad and with the hull 
um, being glued together the way it's going to be glued because I'm going to have to seal this thing up really good. There are some light leaks back here that you can see that, that means I'm going to have to really do a lot of gluing and sealing and then all the railings are going to be on the ship all the way around it and stuff so if I ever had to get that battery back out of there I would do a lot of damage cracking this thing back open trying to fix it so I thought well we'll just put the battery in the bottom and um, in a base or something and that'll work out fine. Uh, we're going to put the board inside the model which will be a remote control board that allow me to turn it off and on and stuff like that so a little bit of change of plan there I'm just going to take this jack back out and move it and um, so anyway uh, that's going to work out and uh, but we're going to be working on next is more of the uh, superstructure um, putting on all the secondary guns there's tiny little pieces that go on all over the place you know little fire hose reels and smaller like anti-aircraft guns and stuff like that uh, and then finally the railings and everything I'll be doing the main masts on the ship at the very end because they're, you know, they're tall and everything. And you're going to be reaching around the model, putting little stuff on here and there, and you don't want to be knocking into those all the time. So do those last and then do the rigging. So uh, I'll do a little bit more work on it and come back again with another update on this. So I'm really happy with how it's going and hope you guys enjoyed seeing it again. So if you're interested in one of these, I really highly recommend it. You know, like I said, the Ravel kit it's readily available you know you can find it they actually make a, uh, a special edition version of this kit that I didn't know about that actually comes with photo Etch from Ravel which um, you know I got a great deal with all the accessories and everything that came with this but if I had to do it again I'd buy that kit in a heartbeat it's you know I've seen them on eBay for right out right around hundred and forty dollars hundred and fifty dollars and it comes with all the photo Etch and I think uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, if the you know be a little bit easier to work with because Ravel's directions on using their own photo etch might be a little bit more clear as I've said um, it's been a little difficult to figure some things out every once in a while with the uh, Edward photo etch and not having the clearest instructions you know they show you how to put stuff together but you don't exactly sometimes get to see um, exactly where it goes or you know <laughs> the exact spot that it attaches and things like that so what I've been doing is I've been going and looking at a lot of videos and uh, checking out websites out there on the Bismarck where people have pictures of the model built. Thank, thank goodness for that because that's um, helped me out a lot. I've been able to see, you know, uh, where everything actually went and everything. So that's helped out a lot. But you know, the Ravel kit with the photo etch might have be, a, you know, might be a little bit better that way. But maybe somebody out there has used it or knows about it and they'll comment on the video or something. But anyway, that's it for this one, guys. Um, We'll be back again in another week or so and show you a little bit more. Uh, I'm just taking my time on it. No hurry. You know, it's just a little bit here and there. It's going to take some time to do all the railing and the uh, rigging and all that, but it's going to be a beautiful ship when it's done. I'm really happy with how it's coming out. And then we'll start on the hood after that. So lots of fun here. Something different, too. Okay, everybody, you guys take care out there. I hope none of you guys get this flu. Try to stay away from that if you can. But... Uh, you guys take care, build some models, and uh, we'll see you next time. Happy modeling, everyone.